Well, on we go with this extraordinary story of this journey towards the promised land. Week six, I think it is now. So you know by now that those people of Israel were slaves, weren't they, in Egypt? God sent a rescuer, a man called Moses, um, who led them out and God opened up the Red Sea. He came down among them and the people worshipped God, didn't they, as they came out on the other side. They said to God, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods, who is like you? And they worshipped him. And then he led them out with that pillar of fire and on they went and they came to that place where the waters were bitter and they were thirsty and they couldn't drink. And then they complained. Uh, but Moses prayed um, and God showed him a tree and he threw it in and the people were able to drink. And then we talked about how we too can choose whether we complain or pray when things get difficult. And then the the food runs out, do you remember? And they're complaining again. Um, and God provides angels food, bread from heaven, comes down and for 40 years he feeds them with this food. Um, and they go out and they pick it up and it's enough to feed hundreds of thousands of people. And on they go with that pillar of fire towards the back of the desert to Mount Horeb where Moses had first seen that burning bush. And this was a desperate, dry, dusty place. And it was a place of where the people again complained. And they said, why have you brought us out here, Moses? We're going to die out here. And they quarreled with God and it was called a place of contention. And then Moses took his stick, as God had said, and water poured out, huge amounts of water, and the people were able to drink, and God had provided for them again. And then on they went, you remember we did this last week, right down to the bottom of the peninsula, to this vast mountain. The Bible calls it the mountain of God, Mount Sinai. And Moses stands at the bottom of the mountain. And there at that place, the people say to Moses, you know, we're a, we are fearful of God, um, but we will do whatever he says whatever he's saying to you we will do it and we will obey him and so Moses finally goes up into that mountain when God calls him and God himself comes down onto the mountain and as he does the whole earth begins to shake um, and the mountain begins to move and and like in our psalm it said that the mountain skipped like goats and the hills jumped around like lambs that's what it seemed like to the people and a great thunderstorm came down with dark clouds swirling around and lightning and the people were afraid and there was a great sound of a trumpet and of a voice was heard and the people stayed down at the bottom of the mountain why was all this happening because God had come down onto the mountain and Moses goes up and for 40 days he's there we don't know very much about what happened but we do know that God gave to him those two tablets of stone on which were written those commandments but down at the bottom of the mountain, there's something else going on. Down at the bottom of the mountain, there's trouble because the people are waiting and waiting and they've waited there for many days and for many weeks in the end. Um, and what do you think they began to do? Yeah, you've guessed it. They began to complain again. They said, we don't know what's become of this man, Moses. Maybe he's died up on the mountain. And they go to Aaron, Moses' brother, and they say, we need a new God. Make us a new God, Aaron. We don't know what Moses is doing now. And so Aaron says, take off your earrings, your gold earrings. Give them to me. And he melts down the gold. And he creates a statue, a golden calf. And he says to the people, here is your God, Israel. Here is your God. He brought you out of Egypt. And the people began to worship this golden calf and they began to fall down. And the following day, they began to sacrifice animals to it. Um, and they, they were feasting and drinking and singing and dancing and worshipping this golden calf as they danced around it. And up on the mountain, Moses doesn't know about this. He's been up there for 40 days. And then suddenly God says to him, Moses, go down off the mountain. The people have quickly turned away the people have quickly turned away I thought how often we can quickly turn away we can go to the meeting and feel that God has touched our hearts we can hear him speak to us maybe about changes that we need in our lives and then we can just come home and think well I'll think about it later I'll just put on the tv we can quickly turn away and then God spoke to Moses and he said, I'm angry with the people. They are, they've made themselves a statue and they're worshipping a golden calf. Now we may not bow down to a golden statue, but we can still have these idols, these little 
gods in our lives. They can be things that are perfectly okay, but things that um, become too important to us, more important than God. An idol is something that's more important than God. This can be an idol. Let me find it for you. There it is. It's my phone. The TV can be an idol. Our friends, our studies, our work. TV, films, all these different things can become idols in our lives if we think about them more than we think of God, if we love them more than we love him. And then God said an extraordinary thing. He said, Moses, I'm going to destroy all the children of Israel and I'm going to take you and I'll make from you a new nation. And Moses falls on his face, I mean, and he prays one of the most extraordinary prayers that's ever been recorded in the Bible. He presents these arguments to God and he says, God, if you destroy the people, the Egyptians are going to hear about it and they're going to say, well, what, what has Jehovah done? He's taken his people out and now he's destroyed them. And then Moses says, oh God, you must remember Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you promised them this land, you promised them these descendants. And then the Bible says an amazing thing happened. And God changed his mind. And because of Moses' prayer, he said, I won't destroy the people. And so Moses descends down the mountain and his assistant Joshua meets him parts of the way down. And Joshua says, Moses, I can hear this great sound in the camp. I think there's a war going on down there. And Moses said, it's not a war, he said. I can hear the people singing. And when he gets down, Moses finds Aaron and he says, Aaron, how could you have let this happen? And then that thing of blaming happens again. Aaron said, it was the people's fault. They would have killed me if I hadn't made this statue. Then he said, I threw, I threw all this gold into the fire and this calf just came out. What a crazy thing to say. And Moses said, no, you were wrong. What you've done is wrong. And Moses was angry and he took the tablets of stone that God had given him and he smashed them. He felt that the people didn't deserve them. I've got an amazing picture. It's one of the most famous pictures ever painted. It's painted by a man called Rembrandt, a Dutch painter. You can actually see this if you go to Berlin. Um, they have the, this painting there. It's a picture of Moses breaking those tablets. Look at his face. He doesn't just look angry in Rembrandt's picture. He looks so sad. He looks so despairing and sorrowful. And then having broken these tablets, he breaks this golden calf and he smashes it up. And he must have got other people to help him. And they ground it down into a powder. And then he put it into water and he made the people drink it. It was a sad, sad day for Israel. And then Moses calls out across the camp. He asks them this powerful question. He says, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? You see, the thing with the Lord is you're either on his side or you're not on his side. We'd like to be a little bit on the Lord's side sometimes and then a little bit on the side of some other stuff. We'd like to partly follow Jesus and partly be like the people around us. John Wesley, this great revivalist in the 18th century, said that really the turning point of his life was when he realised he couldn't be half a Christian. He'd got to be a whole Christian. And that's what Moses was saying. He's saying, who is going to follow God? Are you going to follow God? Am I going to follow God? And that day in the camp, many people died. There was a fight that broke out um, and many people were killed and there was a plague, a disease that God sent um, and the people became very sick. And then God called Moses back up the mountain and Moses went to receive forgiveness for what the people had done and to take again these 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 words um, these tablets with these words written on them up in that mountain um, it was an extraordinary and a sad day and then they continued on with their journey let's just pray Oh God, we, we, we worship you. You are the living God. You are the God who came down on Mount Sinai. You are the God who called Moses into the mountain and caused that mountain to shake and you gave him those commandments. And Lord, we want to, we want to be on your side, Lord. We want to remember like Sally taught us that either you are worth everything, this has to be everything to us or nothing. We can't go down a middle path. Jesus, help us to know this, Lord. Help us to choose your way, always to choose your way. Help us to become whole Christians, not half Christians, Lord. We so pray would you do this in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Very challenging, very challenging for me. 
Okay, we're going to do our quick quiz. We've got three quick questions. What was this? What was this statue, the the golden statue, made from? It was made from some particular bit of jewellery. That's the first question. What was the name of the man who made the statue? What was the name of the man who made that golden calf? And what did Moses make the people do when he ground up the gold? And here's the answers. The statue was made from their earrings, their golden earrings. The man who made the statue, I don't even know if I said his name in that bit, uh, was Aaron, that's Moses' brother. And Moses put the golden, the gold powder into water and made them drink it. Again, I hope you got all those questions right. Well done.